Now that we have all the people who are interested in becoming a software engineer, so let's talk about what are some skills that you must in the next five years. First is definitely the most important one, ChatGPT or any ChatGPT-like services that might be providing you the superpower to become an even more efficient software developers. I remember when I was in college, many of my professors were still very committed into using the terminal as the platform where they code, Vim, and then, or Nano, or even. And I remember at the time I was like, oh, I gotta learn how to use Vim. And then over the next few years, I got introduced to text editor and the, at the time it was sublime and it was already a huge life changer. I was like, oh my God, this is so much nicer and this is so smooth. Like I gotta learn how to use this. And then quickly after that, the most powerful thing that actually changed my life, like it helped me become so efficient was IDEs. Like I use IntelliJ a lot ever since then. And it's kind of like the thing that a lot of programmers need to use in order to reach the maximum efficiency, like the auto completion, like the code search. It's like something that you can't compete against if you're just simply using text editors. Sure, like it can help you accomplish your goal, but having the power of the IDE is a huge life changer and ChatGPT like features will be just like that. And if you refuse to use it, oh, this is going to be way worse than not using the IDE. Yeah, so that's a definitely a huge life changer. And I would say like, if you are someone who has the ability to practice some of these newer tools on your day-to-day -day usages, definitely take advantage of that. And if you already have access to Copilot, I would say like highly recommend using it so you can start to familiarize yourself with how to code these things and what they might be looking for and how you can better document your code. This will help you stand out, become more efficient in the upcoming years. Knowing how to use these technologies will be very, very important. And let's say you work at a company that don't let you use ChatGPT or convinces you not to use it. You also have to remember how you can phrase things in a way that, you know, it's legal for you to ask questions on ChatGPT. And then you have to be able to convert that internally. So that's definitely something that you have to be familiar with. And the next thing, like, I'm afraid it's, it's coming. It's communication and how to write documentations. A lot of these won't be as relevant because if you already mastered number one, you can actually take advantage. That can help you to become more efficient at writing docs or even writing things that you can use to communicate. So I would say like take advantage of ChatGPT, let it help you write drafts, help you update your grammars or like fix any of your sentence flows. Like, yeah, that's amazing. But you still have to be able to communicate really well with your teammate more than ever. Cause now it becomes a time where, oh, it seems that everyone can be a great enough developer since maybe these GPT technology can take on a lot of the heavy lifting. A lot of these comments can also be generated by copilot like features. So now the problem becomes how you can effectively communicate these things both to the GPT technology and to your colleagues or such as PMs or UX peoples. How can you communicate them with even more efficiencies to allow you to push the project faster? And communication will become even more important because with the involvement of like these technologies, like the human element will still be very relevant and having good relationship with your team members and managers will also set you apart. And this is something that you know has been true for the past and it will continue to be true. So definitely don't underestimate the power of communication and your team relationships. Especially if you're working at a larger team, it's harder to stand out. So definitely try to be vocal and document your accomplishments. And those will still be a very important factor. Because when you feel the best, that's when you do the best work. And it definitely sucks if other people take credits, so don't let that happen to you. If you can communicate everything sufficiently and do the right things doing stand-ups, then you know, definitely speak up and take credits where credits are due. And the third thing I wanna talk about is continuous learning and the ability to pick up things fast. So with these technologies, now I feel like teams, managers, as you move forward, they expect you to even pick up things a lot faster because now they know there are tools out there that can help you absorb this information at a more rapid pace. So that means like you have to be always in a growth mindset, how you can take your skill to the next level. Having the ability to pick things up will still be very, very relevant. 
And for example, during my undergrad, like I learned so many different computer science languages, like for no reason like that I don't really use. But it's the fact that I was forcing an environment where I had to learn those things and I had to use it. And that learning process is something that it's important. And I think it will be even more important moving on to the future. Because now when a project is first formed, they might not have to worry about, oh, people may not know these languages. Because there might be tools in place that can help you generate some of the things and try to help your team members onboard a lot faster. So I would say with GPT technologies, a lot of documentations, a lot of examples will be even better. The next thing I want to talk about is relevant languages. So if you are someone who's thinking about becoming a software engineer or a developer, you are interested in coding the hands-on portion of software engineering, then the, the hands-on portion of tech, then definitely learn relevant languages. You don't want to learn something that you know is going to go away in the near future. You don't want to be learning like deprecating languages that it's not as relevant in modern days. So I would say, like I made a recent video about the top five languages that I think will be the most relevant ones. So I would say like definitely pick some of those if you are just getting started. For example, you really ask yourself, hey, am I interested in front? Am I interested in backend? Am I interested in mobile aspect? Am I want to do infra? Because all of these things come with a different set of languages. And having the flexibilities is also very important. So try to keep that in mind as well. But learning the right language can definitely set you up for more success. And the last thing I want to talk about is to pace yourself. In software development, pacing is something that's very often ignored. Like it's all about oh grinding, like you know, try to get to the next level, like trying to do as much as possible. But what's also very important is not working all the time and trying to take a break. Because a lot of times what happens at these bigger tech companies, you have the pressure to perform. You also have a lot of projects. The projects never stop. And you have to slowly manage people as you become more senior. You have to drive projects. You have to look for scopes. And as you grow more into that senior role, like your responsibility, the burden you have to carry is also more. And a lot of time what happens is burnout. And if you're in burnout, it's a time period where you kind of like, you just can't perform. And then a lot of times the company just let you go. So to avoid this, I would recommend to pace yourself. You know, work is important. Doing a good job is important. But you, your health, your mental state is also very, very important, if not more important than what you have to do. So definitely don't sacrifice those. Like we have to come to a realization that, you know, companies don't owe us anything and we don't owe them anything. When time's tough, they will let us go. So like, you know, we shouldn't be selling all our hard waking hours just to do things that we may not enjoy as much. So I would say like keeping yourself a check and pace yourself. That's also very important to be longevity and become a successful software engineer. So yeah guys, that's some of the things that I think is going to be really important. Guys, that's something I think is really important and make sure to let me know what you guys think. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe.